right, kiddos, welcome back. And today we're going to apply some of our vocabulary that we learned a couple of videos ago about you know, oxidizing, uh, reducing, oxidizing and reducing agents, along with our newfound ability to determine oxidation numbers. So let's take a look at this example in our notes where we have a very simple reaction of sodium reacting with chlorine gas to produce sodium chloride. Um, let's not worry about balancing these right now. Let's just go ahead and assign each element or species in this reaction an oxidation number. So sodium is in its elemental state and substances in their elemental state have an oxidation number of zero. Cl2 is the elemental form of chlorine so its oxidation number is zero. Now sodium chloride is a compound Chlorine would be negative 1, and sodium would be positive 1. I'll go back and review how to find oxidation numbers if you have forgotten how I got those two oxidation numbers for chlorine and sodium. We can now determine what was oxidized and reduced. It looks like sodium went from 0 to positive 1. Now to do that, you have to lose a negative charge. You have to lose electrons. So the substance oxidized was sodium. Chlorine went from 0 to negative 1. To become negative, you need to gain electrons. So gain electrons is reduction, so the chlorine was the substance reduced in that reaction. Now remember, the oxidizing agent is the species that contains the element reduced, and so that would be chlorine gas, and the reducing agent is the species that contains the element oxidized, so that would be sodium. It's not too bad, is it? All right, why don't you try example three without my help? So pause the video, go ahead and try this one, and come back and see how you did. We'll see you in just a sec. All right, welcome back. Iron has an oxidation number of zero. It's in its elemental state as Fe. O2 is the elemental form of oxygen, so its oxidation number is zero. On the product side, Fe2O3, Oxygen is obviously more electronegative than iron. Its charge would be two negative. That gives me a total of six negatives because there are three oxygens. So that means I have to get six positives. So each iron would be positive three. So let's take a look. Iron went from zero to positive three. To do that, you have to lose electrons. So the substance oxidized was iron. Oxygen went from zero to negative two. So it had, gain, it had to gain electrons to do that, so the substance reduced was O2. The oxidizing agent is the species that contains the element reduced, so that would be O2. And the reducing agent is the species that contains the element oxidized, so that would be iron. Did you get all those right? That's yeah, not too hard, is it? All right, let's take a look at the next one. Why don't you try doing example four now without my help? This one's a little bit more difficult, but I think you guys can do it. Pause the video and come back. We'll see how you did. Alrighty, welcome back. Um, let's see, uh, let's assign everybody an oxidation number. Oxygen's two negative and Fe2O3, and the iron would be positive three. And CO, oxygen's two negative, carbon would be two positive. On the other side, FeO, the oxygen's two negative, and here the iron's only two positive. In CO2, oxygen's two negative uh, for a total of four negatives because there are two oxygens, so that carbon has to be positive four. Okay, let's make some decisions here. Um, looks like iron went from three positive to two positive. To do that, it had to gain electrons. Its charge was reduced. So the substance reduced was Fe2O3. Three. Now, technically, it was the iron in Fe2O3. I would accept either answer. All right, it looks like carbon went from 2 plus to 4 plus. So to do that, it had to lose electrons. So the carbon in carbon monoxide was oxidized. Now, remember, the oxidizing agent is the species that contains the element reduced. So the species that contains the element reduced would be Fe2O3. And the reducing agent is the species that contains the element that was oxidized. 
and so that species would be CO. Alrighty, let me do number five for you. Boy, this one looks ugly, doesn't it? Alright, so oxygen's two negative. Um, so that gives me 12 negatives because there's actually a total of six oxygens here, so I need to get uh, 12 positives. Looks like I have two nitrates stuck to that copper. Each nitrate's negative one, so that makes each copper positive two. I need 10 more positives and two nitrogens to get me there, so each nitrogen would be positive five. Uh, for Na3PO4, O is two negative. Sodium, as we've seen several times, can only be positive one when it loses electrons. It's only got one electron to lose. Uh, that would make the phosphorus positive five. Uh, on the other side, it doesn't get any prettier, does it? Oxygen's two negative. Um, see, we have two phosphates. Each phosphate's three negative, so that's six negatives. That's stuck to three coppers, so each copper must be positive two. And that makes that phosphorus, let's see, we have eight oxygen, 16 negatives. We have three coppers, six positives, so I need 10 more positives. So each phosphorus must be positive five also. And for NaNO3, oxygen's two negative, sodium's positive one, and my uh, nitrogen turns out to be positive five. So let's see what happened here. Copper went from positive two to positive two. Nothing really exciting happened there. Uh, Nitrogen went from positive 5 to positive 5. Boy, oxygen went from negative 2 to negative 2 and negative 2. Nothing really there. Sodium went from positive 1 to positive 1. Um, phosphorus went from positive 5 to positive 5. Yeah, this is not a redox reaction. So there was no reduction or oxidation. So not all reactions involve losing and gaining electrons. And this is a great example of a reaction that's not a redox reaction. All right, example six is our last one. This involves the net, a net ionic equation. So we should be able to handle this pretty well. Just remember that the sum of the charges needs to equal the charge of the ion when I'm done assigning oxidation numbers. So for MnO4 negative, the permanganate ion, oxygen's negative two, and there are four oxygens, that's eight negatives, and I need to have a negative left over. So that means the manganese is positive seven, which is possible. Um, manganese ends with uh, 4s2, 3d5, as far as its electron configuration is concerned, so that would be doable. Looks like hydrogen's positive one here. It's not elemental, it's the hydrogen ion. In HaSO3 negative, our oxygen's negative two. Hydrogen, the most positive it can be, is positive one. So let's see, I have six negatives. I have a positive from my hydrogen. I have to have a negative one left over, so I believe that arsenic would be positive four. That would give me five positives total against six negatives, and I would have a negative left over. Yeah, that looks good. All right, manganese, the ion here is positive two. It tells us that's not elemental manganese. It's the manganese two ion. ASO4, three negative. Oxygen's two negative. That would make that arsenic positive five. And in water, oxygen's two negative, and the hydrogen is positive one. So let's see what happened here. Looks like manganese went from positive seven to positive two. Its charge was reduced. It had to gain electrons to do that. So the substance reduced was actually the manganese in the permanganate ion. What was oxidized? Uh, looks like the arsenic went from positive 4 to positive 5. To do that, it had to lose electrons. So HAS is actually the arsenic in this ion, O3 negative, was the substance oxidized. The oxidizing agent is the species that contains the element reduced. So that would be MnO4 negative. And the reducing agent is the species that contains the element oxidized. So that would be H. 
AS031 negative. Okay. All right. That shouldn't have been too bad. That was a nice review of some vocabulary terms as well as determining oxidation numbers. So hopefully that was helpful to you. Now the next time we see each other, we're going to learn how to balance redox reactions. This happens to be a very difficult concept for some students, but I found a pretty simple way to do that, and I'll be teaching that to you in the next video. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.